started. Hi fifth graders. Today we're going to talk about um, an artist named Helen Frankenthaler and she was born in 1928 in New York City and lived until 2011. She um, was a specialist in a type of art known as abstract expressionism. And abstract expressionism involves staining canvases by pouring paint on them and then tipping the canvases to move the paint around. So it's not a realistic form of painting, but it's an abstract form of painting. And the painting gives you an impression of a mood. And so it's open to interpretation how it makes you feel or how the artist felt when she did it. So it's a really neat type of art that we can be looking at right now and it might be super um, appropriate for this time while we're sheltering in place and maybe we're having mixed emotions about what we're going through right now. And so we can express ourselves um, with paint and there's no right or wrong way to do this with this type of painting. So um, a little bit more about Helen Frankenthaler. She, um, she was born in 1928 in New York City. She went to very good schools and did a lot of traveling when she was younger and she studied in Mexico. And she was influenced by other artists of her time, but she developed her own style of art. And so she developed a style of art that is known as abstract expressionism. And she was a pioneer in that method. And there are many other very famous artists that we study who also do the type of art known as abstract expressionism. You can see this type of art in museums like the San Francisco Museum of Modern Art and the Mo Museum of Modern Art in New York City and all other modern art museums. This is a form of modern art. So she was a pioneer of this art form and she would thin her paint until it was very liquidy and then let it soak into the canvas by, and pour it into the canvas. So she did not use brushes. Um, instead, she would leave splatter marks and drips, and that would show how she created the, um, the work. So we are going to study specifically this work, which is called Blue Atmosphere. And she made this piece of work in 1963. Um, it's, it's like a three by two foot uh, piece of artwork and uh, she, um, um, made this piece of artwork and it has a lot of like the emotional appeal of the colors. So we can think about what those colors mean to us. Like blue colors might be calming and the red colors might be more invigorating or invoke more something like anger. Um, let's see if we want to think about why this painting is called blue atmosphere um the cloudy shapes um are like the atmosphere which is like the air around us and then the red shape pretty much dominates the painting so um the colors of this painting do have form but unlike geometric form which would be squares and rectangles and triangles and circles this painting has organic shapes in it and that reflects the mood so you might look at this painting and you might see a bank of fog slipping over the top of a mountain like we see in the highlands sometimes or you might see clouds like we would see in the sky there's a few clouds in the sky today there was a lot more in the sky a couple weeks ago when it was raining um, and so you can interpret these paintings in many different ways so uh, we don't think that we know what is up and what is down in this painting or the right way to hang it. So uh, you can see all different types of things in this painting. You can interpret it, interpret it all different ways. So when you're making a painting like this, you can um, do it in all different types of ways. Hi. So we are going to do an example. Um, Catherine is going to do an example. <laughs> but just to let you know that there are lots of different things around the house that you can use to make this project. For example, 
Some of the ones we did were on cardboard and we just cut cardboard from something that came in the mail. And then we, in this case, we used food dye that was watered down, but you could also use watered down watercolors to do this one. Um, this one was on an index card and we just used um, marker, uh, two different markers and we then we spritzed it with water and sprinkled salt on it and then let it dry and that's how it got all of those very neat little spots so that was with marker um let's see now here's this one we did which was with um crayon so you can use crayons you can use markers you can use paint and then you should have water and salt and a straw and I think that's it and you can do this on any kind of paper that you can find around your house including cardboard you can do it um, this one was done using a paper towel just have something underneath it and then of course uh, so that your parents don't get super upset at me please prepare your work surface so that you're not um, going to have paint all over the table and we are also doing this outside but I can tell you that you can do it on a sidewalk and that would be fine. Um, you could do it on a lawn and that would be okay too. So there are a lot of ways to practice being an abstract expressionist that doesn't involve getting in trouble because you're making the house a mess. So Catherine, take it away. So this is the piece that I'm going to be showing you how to make. This one was used with markers, but I'm going to show you with something that I don't know, some people may have more in-house, <laughs> in-house. So I'm going to be using watered down food coloring. Yes, assorted food colors and egg dye from Signature Kitchens. So you're going to take, using a straw, a drop of your watered down food coloring by holding the end so it gathers ink. Then you're going to drop it right there then take out the rest of the dye. Then using the straw, you're going to blow. With a sort of hard force, so that way it creates a cool design. Then we're going to take beautiful blue. One drop. Shake out the rest, straw. Then, once you have that, you're going to take your water and go one, two, let's say two. Then you take salt, sprinkle the salt on your piece, your masterpiece, it's beautiful. And then you put it somewhere to dry this case we have a chair that's in the sun then once it's dry it should be something similar to this this one didn't have the salt effect as well towards the blue you can see the salt effect and yes so we're going to wait for that to dry be right back okay we're back and we're just finishing up hope you have fun doing this project. There's really no right way to do it. There's no wrong way to do it. It's just all about using your art to express your emotions um, in a way that might be actually really helpful. So here's the one that Helen Frankenthaler did. And here's the one that I did and this big soppy one. And then this is the example that I made earlier to show you guys what to do. This is how it turned out. It may not look like much, but when you really zoom in to like right there, there is a lot of salt texture. And that's what happens when you mix the water and the salt. Yeah. So there's a chemical reaction. Yes. And uh, Science. this is a lot of fun. So hope you guys can have some fun with this. And um, if you feel like it, take a picture of what you did and have your parent post it to the Classroom Shutterfly site. And we'll all enjoy each other's artwork that way as if it were in a gallery. Okay, thanks a lot. See you next time.